Hello my lovelies. Okay, this is the video that's going to show you how to set up AutoCAD to make it look just like it looks in our lab. Okay, so when you go to our Canvas homepage and you follow the link and you download AutoCAD, then when you open it up, it's going to look just like this. Okay, so these are the steps that you're going to go through to make it look just like our computers in the lab. So, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load these buttons down at the bottom. Now, when you install AutoCAD and you open it up, on the school laptop it may give you a dialog box that says you may need to adjust your display. Okay, so if you adjust your display, these buttons may disappear if you have AutoCAD open while you are adjusting. Okay, so to adjust the display, I would go ahead and close AutoCAD back out and then you're going to right mouse click on your laptop desktop and go to display settings. The default for the larger HP laptop is 150% right here at scale and layout. If you leave it 150%, the screen of your AutoCAD is going to be really, really small. So if you bump it to 125 or 100, that's going to give you more room to actually draw. Okay, so you decide that for yourself. Mine's on 100 just because I have a different laptop than you do. The laptops, I think, from maybe South Point or Rock Hill High, the smaller HP laptop, those are already set. You really can't change it. It's already the highest it needs to be. And it, it will show all of your buttons, but you really just can't change the display. So you'll have to deal with what you've got. So when you pick whichever one you want for this, then you go back out to your AutoCAD and you should see all the buttons. Okay? So first things first, down at the bottom, we're going to go to the three lines down at the bottom of your screen and it's going to pop up and say customization. So when you click that, you're going to get the list here. Some things are already checked, so you don't worry about it if it's already checked. You just leave it checked. We're going to add to that, we're going to add coordinates, dynamic input, line weight, and units. Okay, so those are the properties that we're going to add to our toggle switches down at the bottom. So once you do that, click anywhere in your screen so you can close that pop-up that popped up there. Now, we're going to go to the object snap button the little arrow next to the object snap button, I need you to click that. And then we need to turn on midpoint because midpoint is not the default and you know we use midpoint all the time. So turn on midpoint. One of the things that you also need to check is that everything is turned on that you need to turn on. Um, the grid, you know, we turn that off no matter what. You want to turn on dynamic input you want to turn on polar tracking. Click the arrow next to it so you can change this to either 45 or 30 because if you leave it on 90 and you start trying to draw it's not going to snap the way you're used to seeing it kind of snap to the different angles. So pick an angle, there you go. Now you want to turn on line weight and we'll get to that in just a minute. We're going to do some settings in there and your annotative scale is it's going to turn itself off and on automatically so you don't really have to worry about that okay so we've turned that on we're good now we're going to go to the middle of the screen somewhere I want you to right mouse click and you're going to go to options now this is going to default to wherever I was the last time I used it so yours will probably be on maybe file or display but we're going to work our way through the tabs. Okay, The file tab, don't touch anything on here. Everything is set the way it should be. Click the display tab. Okay, The display tab. Go to the colors button and then change your color from black or whatever the numbers are to white. Click apply and close and now it changes your background to the white background which is what you're used to in the drafting lab because we print on white paper that way our layers show up a better way okay all right now I have this 
checked the use large button for toolbars. I have a different laptop than you do. You will probably leave this unchecked for you, okay? Because when we load the object snaps on the side and the zoom toolbar on the side, if you don't have this checked, they should be the right size. If you check it, they're going to make the buttons bigger. So you'll probably need to check one way or the other how you want to do your toolbars, but this is up to you. Okay, go to the Open and Save tab. Automatic Save right here. Now, this is not automatically saving your drawing in your folder. This is creating a temporary backup file. So let's change this to three minutes and go ahead and check these buttons. AutoCAD does a very good job of creating a restore file if it happens to lock up, but sometimes you're the one that made the mistake of overwriting a file or, or that type of thing, so I can sometimes pull a backup file or a temporary save file and get back some of your work. So do this, so this is another little safeguard. Hopefully we won't have to use it. Okay, let's skip on over to the user preference tab. Go to line weight settings. And your scale may be in the middle somewhere. We want to move that down to the second click. Okay, so just knock that back to the second click. So when we actually have our line weights and our layers, they're going to show up pretty much the way they're going to look on the paper. The more you increase this, the thicker they're going to look and we don't need them to look that way okay so leave everything where it was set as far as display in the millimeters just move your scale slider down to the second click tell that to apply and close okay the drafting tab everything's fine we shouldn't have to mess with anything here the 3d modeling tab um, when you open this up yes AutoCAD can do 3d modeling but we use inventor for that so the navigation wheel over here on the side, um, a lot of times people will accidentally click that and flip their whole drawing around crazy and then they freak out when they can't get it back the way it's supposed to be. So we're just going to turn off all of these display tools for the 3D options. Okay, so everything in this lower corner, take the checkbox off. Okay. Now the selection tab. It defaults to allow press and drag lasso. When I teach you to use this, I turn this off because it gets kind of confusing for people to use. If you want to leave it on and see what it does, it affects our selection window and our crossing window. So I personally do not like the lasso command. I always take it off, but that's personal preference for you. It's your school laptop to work on, so you can leave it on. Now, once you do this, tell it to apply, tell it OK. All right, so now we're used to our blank screen. We need to load our toolbars. So up at the top, at the end of our quick, our quick start ribbon, drop that menu bar down and tell it show menu bar. So this adds the menu bar across the top that I always load because in the updates, sometime com sometimes the commands go away or they move them to a different part of the ribbon or a different tab. So this has pretty much stayed the same ever since AutoCAD was released. They've added more to it, but I don't think they've taken anything away. So this, if you lose something, this will let you hopefully find it again. So along this toolbar, we want to go to Tools, Toolbars, AutoCAD, and you want to load Object Snap. So turn Object Snap on. Again, my buttons will probably be bigger than yours. Take it, grab it, dock it all the way over. So you're going to pull it till it starts to dock. See how it changes the shape of it? And then let go. Now you've docked your Object Snaps. This is what you're used to over in the lab. Okay. Go back to Tools, Toolbars, AutoCAD, and then you may have to use this little down arrow to get to Zoom. There's your Zoom. Pull that over to the side, and there is 
your zoom toolbar. Now one thing that you may have to do, see the um, command line isn't typically docked when you open this up. Um, just grab the little bars on the left and pull straight down and it will dock itself down at the bottom. If you ever lose your command line, if you accidentally click the X and cut it off, if you click control and the number 9, it will open up your command function. So I'm going to do that now. Control and 9 and this is what will pop up. So to display, hit control 9, do you want to close your, your window? No, I don't. Mine is already open. So I'm just going to tell this no. So if you lose it, it will ask you, do you want to open your command window? So just control 9 will bring that back if you happen to turn it off. So at this point, AutoCAD is set up exactly like it is in our lab. So now you would go and load your OneDrive. So if you just type in one and go to your OneDrive app, if you have not logged in, it's going to pop up and ask for your login for OneDrive. OneDrive is your Canvas login. Remember that's your number at rhmail.org and then it's your Canvas password. If your password, which is your birthday, has a zero at the beginning of it, try leaving the zero off. So remember, it's your canvas number at rhmail.org, not .com. So rhmail.org. So once you log in, give it a minute, and all of your drawings should be there. When you are working in AutoCAD and you are creating a drawing, you want to save it to your OneDrive. So when you come back to the lab, everything will be there. Now, when you are doing a drawing, do not immediately close the laptop when you finish. The little icons down here at the bottom, If once you save something, these little um, wheels pop up saying they're backing things up. So the drawings will not back up completely until you close them. So save as you go. Close AutoCAD when you're finished. Leave your laptop open for a few minutes until this says up to date. Okay? When it says up to date, you can close your laptop and go do your other stuff. Okay? So remember you have to give it time to sync in order for it to show back up in your OneDrive in the computer lab. Okay? All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Give me a message, send me a message or something, and I can help you out. But hopefully, this video helps you set your laptop up the same way our computers are set up in the lab. Bye, guys.